10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack Wack Attack. Today is April 25th and um, yeah, there's been some really cool things happening so let's get to it. Um, here we have a post from Mav who says today might be a holiday in Australia and New Zealand but the bi-weekly show must go out. It must go on. I have a read on Medium and there's a link and he says and join us tomorrow on the Twitter space to discuss and that tomorrow is today so <laughs> yeah you might be in the Twitter space like right now um, instead of well, yeah, right now. So you can watch Rocket Fuel after you finish the trip space. So let's get to the bi-weekly update. Mav here has details about um, our eat supply. He says it has grown to 250,035. Uh, um, annualized growth of 206%. That is the biggest that I've ever seen that number. It's gone up by 8% in the last week. Well, in the last two weeks, sorry, which is absolutely amazing. Um, active mini pool count has grown 26% to 17,539, annualized growth of 678%. Node operator count has grown 6.4% to 2,415, annualized growth of 170%. Uh, mini pool Q, this is a new metric. Um, it, ETH in the Q um, is now 63,767, um, growth comparisons to come in the next report. So some of the things in there have, are going to have spoilers for things that we're going to talk about later, but um, it's really cool. So we have version 1.9.2, high priority for Lighthouse and Prism, version 1.9.3, which is recommended for everyone, you know, R&D, so Atlas launched a mainnet successfully, triggered a spike in ETH being staked in Rocket Pool, you know, Atlas smart contracts were verified and merged, meaning they are now eligible for immunify bounty, uh, minor issue was identified for node operators not in the smoothing pool attempting to reduce their bond. A manual workaround is available now with a smart node hotfix and subsequent smart contract fix to follow later. And the ZK Sync era price feed has been successfully deployed and will become active following a subsequent smart node update. That's really cool. And work continues on building Rocket Pool's bigger and better website, which we still haven't seen any sneak peeks of. So Mav, if you are watching this, please share those with us because we'd love to see them. Um, integrations, there's 30 Finance, Alchemex, DAP Node, um, um, RVV3 and Arbitrum. Um, <laughs> this is uh, some spoiler stuff here. Comments in Discord indicate, well, not spoilers really, but like kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Comments in Discord indicate that a proposal for RV to support our ETH e mode hyper staking may be raised soon. That is a little bit of a spoiler because I'm going to be talking about that later as well. Um, incentivized pools. We'll launch on pancake swap, which we talked about here, time swap, sommelier, um, an ETH index token was proposed, backed by 50% R ETH, which is really cool. Um, and then Maverick Protocol um, deployed uh, R ETH ETH pool, and then Hop Fast Bridge vote is going to go through, OKX um, integrated rocket pool, and then we have. Uh, flash stake as well with governance stuff. There's um, a lot of discussion happening on the DAO forum. Uh, but this, this stuff, discussion about the IMC and brainstorming next steps for Atlas is underway. Uh, GM, GMC round two has now closed. Uh, the GMC, um, I can give you a little spoiler about this, so a little tease. Um, we're doing a really good job of getting the grant stuff set. Um, we'll have the new amounts released on May 1st um, as scheduled, which is really exciting. IMC period stuff there. Uh, with media marketing, it says strong mini pool demand post Atlas has helped the new deposit pool queue. Um, designed to put RETH to work more effectively, boosting RETH APR to one of the highest liquid staking rewards available, which we'll be talking about later as well. And then media, cutler, uh, media, at, media coverage of Atlas by ETH Staker, Binance Research, Coindesk, Blockworks, um, plus an animated um, information from um, Sleety on tokenmotion.io. And then there was um, podcast coverage and YouTube coverage as well. And um, lots of discussions happening. Um, lots of interviews happening of team members. Um, Rocket Pool getting featured on other... Um, on other um, projects, Twitter spaces and RPL was listed by Bithump 
and Ventiswap and Coin Cradle. Of course, do your own research. Uh, Rocket Fuel, hosted by me, hosted a special Atlas Bullcast featuring Jasper, Ken, and Marceau. Rocket Pool hit an all time high price in USD, um, got uh, to the top 50 on CoinGecko, hit the fifth highest token traded by volume on Uniswap. Staking Rewards integrated Rocket Pool as a new asset. Uh, Open Ocean. Uh, featured Rocket Pool in the LST aggregator, and then there's a whole lot of media pieces. Um, Securities.io, the currency, Crypto News, News BTC, Investopedia, Forbes, Crypto.News, AMB Crypto, Coin, excuse me, CoinGape, and um, Stockhead, and lots of other Twitter content. Far too much to list here. So, like I've been like telling you all, like these last few days and weeks, there is so much rocket pool content out there right now so many mentions so many integrations so many partnerships so much twitter buzz like i've never seen this much buzz happen about rocket pool in my whole time that i've been in in the community in the protocol in the community it's really really awesome to see like just how great things are out there um and so great for maverick to be uh putting all that in the update because just compiling this update it would probably take a whole day i'm sure uh, just from you know knowing how i compile my links for my episodes as well so thanks mav for that and that's really cool and please start working on holidays like take a day off <clears throat> okay so the next thing is really interesting so not you here shared a screenshot of someone who got eth coming in from kraken and then it went out of kraken and it went into our ETH minting so this is just you know Oh, many such cases kind of um, an event here that we're really hoping for like last couple of days there's been quite a big push of um, anticipating the kraken withdrawals happened like they happened overnight in the u.s like 5 a.m eastern time i think um so it was just a matter of seeing like what the flows were going to look like and following back you know people who are minting our eth to see how they're coming and where they're coming from and it's really amazing to see that some of that kraken um, unstaked eth is making its way to rocket pool I'm really happy to see that that's happening. And we're going to be talking about that a whole lot today, but not specifically just um, the Kraken stuff, but other exciting things. Um, so one of the things uh, that has happened because of all this new um, our ETH that's been coming through and being, has been minted is we hit a milestone of 250,000 um, our ETH has been issued. So that's just under um, like 240,000 ETH worth of our um, no that's more than that sorry 270,000 worth of ether 280,000 worth of eth um eth worth of our eth sorry yeah because our eth is more valuable than eth but um that's really great that we hit that milestone like it took us just a, basically a couple of weeks in the last few weeks you know we've had more than 50,000 our eth coming on board which is amazing um around 50,000 i think in the last few weeks um really really cool stuff and of course because of that then we hit another land, land, uh, landmark as well another milestone so here jasper shares the tree, uh, tweet that i'm sharing from trading it says i guess you might say atlas is going well congrats to the rocket pool team and community you can mint as much our eth as you want gone are the days of the closed deposit pool um, i replied to that tweet by saying gone are the days for now <laughs> but, but um, hopefully um you know we find a good balance between um the queue length and um, people depositing our, depositing our ETH. I think having that sweet balance would be amazing right now just to get the growth going. Maybe like a, you know, a queue that's like a week long would be amazing. It would be so good. But we hit 500,577 500, ETH that has been deposited on Beacon Chain. That's according to uh, Dr. Worm's dashboard on, on Dune Analytics. So that was a really great landmark. So let's see what, what how is all this happening, right? So... Um, we see that you know big whales are spinning up uh, mini pools so this person um, 0x74d like basically you know, the address right here is a uh, 0x um, 2b5c um, spun up like dozens and dozens of uh, mini pools uh, validators and this person as well um, um, sub subal pinefair.eth I, I don't know like what that is but then dokia capitals um started going through as well what that we talked about a couple of days ago so there's a whole lot of mini uh, validators com coming in i'm just going to start calling them validators now instead of distinguishing between um leb8s and um regular mini pools 
it's just I think like I'm just gonna put it together and call it a validator a rocket pool validator is coming online <laughs> because there's just too much um but yeah the the stream the constant stream of new um mini pool and new validators is 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 beautiful to see um and then this is really exciting to see as well so we're getting a whole lot of um thousand plus eth deposits into the deposit pool so as you can see here you know there's a 2000 eth and then um yeah there's a comment here like um that someone paid 0.28 eth in gas to do all those assignments so the whole they're paying a whole lot of um of um what's happening is basically as the eth comes in they pay for the amounts to go to the to the mini pools that are in the validators that are in the queue so the person had to pay like quite a big chunk of gas to um, pay for those hundreds of well not hundreds like yeah hundreds of uh, mini pool of validators that they brought online so thanks for that will um and then look another 415 ETH deposit um and um then roots said what's the link for minting our ETH? i got some good news i have about 2000 ETH ready to mint um and i think this was on behalf of uh, of someone else not mine i wish and roots of course is from long island blockchain you might have seen some of their videos on youtube um but yeah that's they're bringing they're bringing eth to the market then they hit, there's a 600 eth deposit um and then another 2000 eth deposit from the same person who had the 2000 eth deposit earlier and then let's have a look at uh, what um rocket scan is showing us so let me refresh the page to get the latest information so i don't know if you can see this chart here on the right of the screen but that little bit of growth right there looks like it's going vertical um which is really great because we've had a few instances of um, rocket pools like growth going kind of vertical but i feel like this one's going to be a bit more sustained so right around march of 2022 when the curve stuff was going online uh, right around the merge there was a big surge right then there was a small surge in july of um 2022 20, uh, as well and then this one like right now like if you start from the beginning of april when the when the pool was expanded uh the deposit pool was expanded to eighteen thousand. like we've literally gone from i want to say somewhere around um 250,000 to 299,000 plus like three, so like a whole lot of ethers come in so let's have a look at some of these deposits you know 33 ETH, 53 ETH, 40 ETH, like nice amounts but this is the thing that i really want to show you all so on april 25th um, utc time um, we had 8500 ETH coming in um, and then 1000 1200 1300 1700 2500 um, like just beautiful amounts of ETH coming in every day for like the last since atlas went live basically um if you have a look at the weekly amounts uh, last week there was sixteen thousand eth um and that changes i think on sunday night um yeah uh, and then this week we've already had ten thousand basically uh sorry eleven thousand one hundred um this this growth is just phenomenal to see and it's not just the um, the fact that you know we're getting big amounts but we're getting a big number of deposits as well like you know 390 300 already in the last couple of days um that's a very very respectable amount if we have a look at april now april's up to forty four thousand um four hundred pretty much forty four thousand three hundred um february was nineteen thousand six hundred january twenty thousand before that we had two months september twenty twenty two and uh, march 2022 where we had 30,000 or just above 30,000 for each of those already in april like we've we've smashed that and we've still got a few days of left of april as well so i really think that that number will be going up to like hopefully you know 70 80,000 i'm praying that it'll hit 100,000 with like some mega whale like um minting out the the whole of the queue that would be incredible to see but yeah just this our ETH growth is really looking strong right now um and i think it's going to get stronger even still okay so as you can see then like you know since atlas went live the queue wait time in days like shot up quite a lot of how long it was going to take you to get your queue through um but now that's kind of flattened off with all these deposits and dr worm says it's easy to read queue wait time plot now it's actually going down so um 
it's going down for now. <laughs> I don't think it's going to stay down for long. <laughs> I think it's kind of another couple of legs up, hopefully. But um, I'm not going to perform TA on this chart. <laughs> okay. So yesterday we had the story that someone submitted to, to Rocket Fuel, and um, in my mind I thought it was just you know the the smart node and the order doing what they're supposed to do. So it said here you know we got a uh, Gitcoin. Um, has voted for mini pool and then there's a number there um, c60 and a78 um, to be scrubbed due to invalid withdrawal credentials and then you know the rocket scientists scrubbed it superface scrubbed it um, rocket pool one two um, three so that those two mini pools basically got scrubbed now i thought you know the person made a mistake when they were trying to set up their node um, and therefore their, their um, node was rejected um, however so that that's why i didn't even think it was worth covering on the show pretty much however like so the idea was you know someone screwed up um someone independently discovering the exploit that the scrub is there to mitigate and not knowing that it was already mitigated so people were kind of like just thinking about what's going on they're not really sure um Peter says Gitcoin scrub their own mini pools <laughs> and they said no that's actually the tra scrub transaction so a lot of people just like not sure what was kind of happening um and then um yeah it was not the withdrawal address that there was a problem with what happened is the person was um migrating a solo node I think and they failed to upgrade to the 0x01 credentials within three days and they said the docs say that your credentials have to either be the original 0x00 BLS creds or the 0, um, uh, 0x01 credentials with mini pool addresses. It says the smart node appears to always scrub 0x00 credentials that have timed out, which this node operator has. And then um, um, signage says I must be missing something or there is either a discrepancy between docs and the smart node. So I think um, this was... Um, this was um, what kind of ended up being the reality um so i didn't cover it in the show but then joe woke up and he says i just got up i see scrubs um and he says i'm not getting yelled at so was it the right thing to do or not the right thing to do not sure then explained that it was a solo staker um that didn't set their credentials properly and i um not sure says i only had a quick look and it seemed like it nobody else said anything differently um and i said that uh, Joe said that scrubbing a solo isn't the end of the world. They can still distribute and close and the whole balance goes to them. Basically a glorified and expensive EOA. But yes, if they do reach out, let, let them know. Uh, and then it shows the two um, validators that's got scrubbed. Um, so <laughs> I chimed in and I said, um, it was, uh, Joe, you know, earlier said, was it positive? And I said, um, I didn't really see that much uh, commotion about it, so I didn't even cover it on Rocket Fuel. It seems like the system was working the way that it was supposed to. And Joe was like, it's easy for you to say, I think this is the first legit scrub on mainnet and I'm freaking out over here. So I said, maybe I'll cover it tomorrow. So Joe, this is just coverage for you. Um, so that the person was scrubbed and Joe was kind of like, you know, wondering what caused it, what happened. But it seems like um, everything was... was um, gonna be okay basically and uh any any subterra basically even said that they can even create new mini pools from the same solo staker if they need to since their withdrawals credentials never set so they can fix that and then carry on they just lost some gas so hopefully it's not too big a deal um and that person is okay okay so um joe had this um screenshot of uh, the staking pool eth used and um here it's saying 99.7 percent it says it's happening so people are just like you know what's happening and then um it's that the initialized is equal oh no sorry um yeah so tech tech says what's happening and then joseph's are less than 100 percent. it means that there's more eth put to work on the beacon chain than the pool stakers actually deposited because now when node operators deposit to get into the queue for the mini pools their eth goes on to match 32 for people in front of them in the queue but pool stakers still get credit so basically they get rewards on eth they didn't contribute it means our eth's apr is going up which makes them want to contribute more so it balances out so um joe uh, basically explaining the thing that we've talked about on rocket fuel like a couple of times about how the apr is doing really well because of how the queue is working really efficiently and um then we get we got a little bit more information about that um as well 
oh wait no we don't have that ready i'm sorry i was going to show you a link of the beacon chain website where the um, rocket pool actually let me just see if i can pull it up. oh no it's okay yeah i was just going to show how the rocket pool like rewards are looking really good right now okay so we have this screenshot from um 10 validations.eth that show a really interesting piece of information so for those of you who haven't been around rocket pool for like kind of since the beginning of mainnet launch you might not remember that there was a moment when people uh, the variable of the commission uh, the ver the commission available to node operators is variable and it seemed like people just kind of started gaming it and waiting for 20 percent because the range was from five to 20 percent so this chart shows like these most of these pools over here on the top left of the picture um, are from five to 14 percent um, 15 to 20 percent and 20 percent so there's like you know four thousand or so mini pools there and or validators there and then at fifteen percent, we know once we went to fixed commission, there's about um, seven thousand seven hundred of them. Um, and as you can see, the fourteen percent, you know, since Atlas, there's already six thousand two hundred and seventy-eight. So that is becoming the biggest slice of pie very quickly. And as soon as it's going to be like the the leading type of of um, validator we have, uh, which is absolutely fantastic because this is going to bring down the overall commission for people who hold the RE token that they're paying to node operators um it's it's just such a great solution right like they pay the RE holders pay less commission but the node operators receive more commission because they're receiving it from more people it's a beautifully elegant solution that i absolutely adore and um yeah this is a really nice visualization to just show how much growth there has been in rocket pool since atlas went live um 700 uh, sorry 6278 of the validators now are post atlas which is close to i want to say 40 percent, which is wonderful of course you know some of the previous ones go away because they're not 15 percent anymore so it's kind of eating those away really really great stuff amazing okay so that is not the clip that i wanted to show you um i wanted to show you a clip from the daily gray let me see if i can get that open um i have it uh, right yeah, I don't know why that was there. Okay, well, I guess you got to watch Jordan Klepper for a minute. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. So um, here there's a video of Anthony Sassano today on on the, um, on, uh, the Daily Gway Refuel. Um, Anthony said some really nice things about Rocket, Fuel on today's sh uh, Rocket Pool on today's show. So definitely go and check out those stories. Like he covered it a couple of times. He talked about Rocket Pool. He also talked about the Proteus. So... Um, Definitely give that a listen uh, for a few minutes if you want to catch up on some opinions from um, someone other than me. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really great of Anthony to be giving Rocket Pool such great coverage. So thank you for that, Anthony. Ah, here we go with the with the pool distribution. So um, what's happened is the um, Rocket Pool is now breaking up into the higher ranks. Um, the last seven days, you know, our um, returns have been really great we are now up to 14,850 validators according to beacon chain website and i think we're going to be beating kraken very soon because kraken are winding down there well actually they've already wound them down but we should be like getting above kraken soon and then after that like once we get above binance then you know we're really up there with um lido and coinbase to be in the top tier this unknown is most likely like a cohort of solo stakers and um, other institutions and um, groups that we don't know about or that haven't been tagged. But um, this this rocket pool is slowly climbing up the ranks. And I think, you know, it's just a matter of weeks now before we get ahead of Binance because I think they've got outflows as well. So it's really, really great to see rocket pool um, climbing up the ranks in the, in the pools. Okay, <laughs> next year, this really interesting post, um, Whisker posted um, from the Nexus Mutual Forum. So let's have a look at that and see what's going on over here. So Whisker says, uh, Rocket Pool Protocol is permissionless, non-custodial, with over 2,350 node operators. It's the most decentralized Ethereum staking solution. And then he talks about what is our ETH and explains how it's like the third largest liquid staking token by TVL. And then he says, proposal is to stake 14,400 ETH, approximately 10% of the capital pool with Rocket Pool by exchanging ETH for the R ETH token. 
and then he goes on to explain the rationale he says investments using the capital pool should ideally allow with the following considerations and then there's like um, a stuff there and then like the amount the their capital pool holds about a hundred thousand eth um and then there's a big chunk of it that is um, unproductive that's a hundred thousand they have thirty two thousand STE from Lido and they have like a whole bunch of die and others that are held in vaults and um, talking um, whisker then you know talks about how they should basically um, invest in in rocket pool and how that would be really good so this proposal is um, really cool and um, I really hope that it gains traction in the next mutual. I feel like a lot of community members are going into other protocols now and writing these really great proposals that I think are gaining a lot of traction. Uh, like we saw with Hot Protocol with Dibzy and um, Jasper putting that together that, that work for them. It's really, really great to see this stuff. So um, thank you, Whisker. And I really hope that Nexus Mutual um, react to this positively. That would be fantastic if we can get 15,000 ETH coming in from them. Okay, we just covered that um next um you know we talked about dap node on yesterday's episode about how they were like kind of teasing uh, rocket pool integration so since then uh, they say and rocket pool test is, is now live in the dap store test now and help us get um get us to main net asap so dap node is an app that you can install on your node um and it has like you know very user friendly interfaces for um, getting staking solutions set up and now rocket pool is available on testnet for um, i think goalie um, so you can go play around with um, staking with rocket pool on dap node on testnet and give feedback because i think they, they will really like to have feedback and then you can uh, hopefully get them to mainnet which means that you know we might be open to a new cohort of node operators who are comfortable using dap node but not uh, comfortable using um a command line interface so this is really great from dapnode thank you everyone uh, at dapnode for putting this together okay so we just covered that okay so um nick here shared a screenshot from metamask saying just a heads up for whatever reason metamask staking page is showing the incorrect dollar values for our eth on conversion so if you have a look if you want to change um 36 eth into uh, our eth the numbers that are coming back, you know, you're putting in $67,000 and you're getting out $63,000 worth of our ETH. Um, so obviously that's wrong because you're losing a big chunk of money right there, like $4,000 basically. Um, and Nick um, makes the idea that like it uses the same ETH price to multiply the our ETH value. Um, he says, which team member do I ping, Nick or Mav? So he tagged Mav and he says, see above. Um, could be a contributing factor to the levely, relatively low level of deposits. Um, we show massive loss on the staking conversion. And then an STETH, you know, you put in $67,299 and you get out $69,299, the exact amount. So it's not, it's um, working out properly. Noshua says, of course, you know, it's a MetaMask issue. And Nick says, no doubt, but whoever's in charge of the relationship with MetaMask needs to let them know sooner than rather, uh, sooner rather than later because this is messed up. This is effed. So people are kind of making the idea that uh, they're assuming that one ETH is equal to one R ETH, which of course it isn't because it's not a rebasing token. So it seems like they might have just copied the, um, they might have just copied the, um, the code for STETH over, assuming that our ETH was also a rebasing token and didn't fix it to check the the uh, price from any Oracle or anything like that. So then Noshua says, I reported it to MetaMask directly. Um, if we have any update on that, I will let you know. Okay, so we talked about Mark Zeller yesterday on um, on Rocket Fuel um, about how um, you know he's on vacation and how he wants to talk about E-Mode when he comes back. So he had a couple of tweets out um, yesterday and overnight basically saying um what do you guys prefer for Aave? higher ltv e mode allow for more staking yield juice to be extracted from loops um diversity means same average yield but more lsts join in the fund uh, for now because we're conservatives in terms of risk we can have both long term or he said we can't we can't because we're conservatives in terms of risk we can't have both there was a typo long term we will have both so he says, do you want higher um, LTV e-mode or do you want more diverse e-mode? Um, I selected higher LTV e-mode um, because I know that he wants to, um, 
he wants to work on re e mode so that, that would make sense but the vote was pretty much um, tied 50 50 with 296 votes and then mark gives context he says to give context in current in the in current market a higher ltv can significantly boost staking yield to double figures 95 percent ltv means a 20 times theoretical max leverage double yield as now but only acceptable assets would be st eth cb eth and r eth by staying at 90 percent e mode we could be more inclusive so basically this means that um, what the ratios are of um, depositing um, your um, staking token and then getting back eth and being able to do that uh, so the higher that percentage then the more times you can do it like quote unquote safely of course there's the risks involved you know it's very degen kind of thing but 90 percent you can do it 10 times uh 95 percent you can do it 20 times and 99 percent you can do it 100 times which would be like really really amazing of course but um mark then goes on to say also a higher um, ltv would increase demand significantly on eth deposits that would produce much more revenue for the dow and also make eth deposits for those who want to stay more liquid than holding lsts quite attractive as a base low risk yield so there are definitely some advantages and um, people were asking about um current e-mode ltv gets you as far as you can go without being an absolute degenerate so i'd go with diversity um, and then mark says risk is actually lower than people think the ecosystem has um, three ac um, shit so shit show um, ptsd um, but the more we move forward the more resilient lt lst pegs are both matic lsts and recently r eth are prime examples of this so mark like, is really supporting r eth and i'm really happy about that and rv e mode um i think is going to be absolutely amazing because even if they set the 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 rate at 90 percent, you know what what is at the moment um we can potentially like 10x leverage your r eth on staking and like massively boost your um rewards there's some like um to and fro about like how that will work long term and what the drivers will be and stuff but definitely this like getting e mode will basically let us clear the queue i think very very quickly which is super exciting so thanks mark for that i'll definitely be following that closely to see what else mark is saying and getting information for you all about that okay next we have uh, i'm gonna finish with this story um because it it's a whole big one um uh, but um i talked on on rocket fuel a few weeks ago about how um jasper and val kind of dug into the frax um, staking system um, their lst and like um, kind of found some things that were quite dubious maybe or suspicious or suspicion arousing um and you know they're quite vocal about it uh, people made comments about it on twitter there was a whole like you know range of discussions going on about um how it seems kind of sus in parts their tokenomics and how they kind of like balance out their pools and stuff because only like when you deposit um eth into frax for staking there are a few issues like one of it is like not all of that eth goes to staking 10 percent of it goes to providing liquidity on curve another thing is there's not really a clear way on like redemptions and stuff so anyway um this um sam kazimian kazimian i'm sorry I, if i'm butchering that pronunciation uh popped into trading yes yesterday or today well overnight yeah and he started kind of like defending frax um about about um what what was going on and um basically like um yeah like um jasper said you know i think frax is on the one of the d5 protocols uh, most likely to get a notice sam k super public figurehead algo stablecoin strange shenanigans with staking that literally include trading against retail so um you know this these kind of um these kind of discussions were going back and forth because there was talk about frax getting a wells notice uh, from the sec um so sam basically came into trading and like kind of defended uh, frax defended his position kind of tried to explain some things back and forth and had like a quite a civil conversation i think i didn't really follow all of it along but basically val and uh, jasper and Noshua, a few others were kind of going back and forth like explaining how um how it's all working and how it's all going and what some of the issues are sam at one point even said we're not an lst <laughs> we're an eth pegged stable coin <laughs> so 
So there was that. Uh, and it says we built this thing as if it was stable coin loosely pegged to one ETH. That's why we say every time we explain this project, you're literally the only group of people bitly calling us scammers or Ponzi's for a benign mechanism designed um, design that is specific to how we want the system to work. So there was a whole lot of back and forth um, about this. About this. The discussion is there's too much of a discussion to go and uh, summarize all of it uh, for you uh, but i've got all the links to the discussion in the notes below so you're welcome to click link by link and try to piece together that information um there's a whole lot of discussion going on and like i said you know the the people from rocket pool i think were making really good points um sam kind of held up his own and was making points as well um and eventually it went on to um yeah, I think I messed this link up. I'm sorry. Um, eventually, it led to um, just making a sub-thread um, of trading. So people who want to talk about the, the Frax stuff could kind of like talk it out um, because there was just too much. It was kind of taking over trading, the whole thing. So um, yeah, the whole discussion kind of went on, like I said, for quite a, quite a long time. Um, and it, it, was, it was just kind of steamrolling over everything. So i'm sorry that i can't provide you with a summary of the whole conversation but they they talked for hours and hours about about this whole stuff like on and off like the whole day pretty much so um eventually like uh mav asked you know should they um should they um should we just make them their own thread and um people voted yes so they got kicked out <laughs> they, got, they got to put their discussion into a, a different thread let me see if i can find that um yeah let's see um there's a thread somewhere so yeah if you if you are interested in that conversation definitely follow sam's comments jasper's comments valdorf's comments Noshua's comments um there was some really really good um really really good stuff there um so i think you know there's a lot to learn if you're interested in that but um it's really interesting that you know a founder of another project um came in and kind of like explained himself like and let others tell you how effective or not his explanations were at convincing people that um that you know frack staking is all good but um let me see if i can find the bit where they get kicked out i think it's somewhere around here yeah so um <laughs> um maverick said i need a link and um nostra said start here and then um read until summary here so <laughs> what <laughs> that was the summary <laughs> so that was yeah it was just um there was a whole lot of talk going on so uh definitely check that out if you are interested in that on that note i'm going to end today's episode um there was a whole lot of stuff to get through but i'm really happy with um, how much our ETH is being minted and how that queue is moving. Um, I'm waiting for, yeah, I'm just waiting for those big deposits to come through, like, you know, those 10,000 ETH plus ones. Um, that is going to be a good day. Um, 50,000 plus ETH. Oh my God, I'm going to die. But um, anyway, I hope you all have a lovely evening. I'm sorry this episode is late. The day kind of got, got away from me today, but um, I'm here now and I hope you all have a good day and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.